For 100,000 years, humans are born as a primate species. Expectation of life, what, 25 years for the first few hundred thousand years? First few tens of thousand years. Infant mortality, rife. M microorganism disease, terrifying. Earthquakes, uh, volcanoes, extraordinary. But, and fights over land, over territory, over food, over women, over tribalism. Frightening too. For 95, 96,000 years, heaven watches this with folded arms, with indifference, with coldness. And then around three to 4,000 years ago, but only in really barbaric, illiterate parts of the Middle East, <laughs> not in China, not in China or where people can read or think or do science, no, no, no in barbaric, illiterate, backward parts of the Middle East, it's decided we can't let this go on, we better intervene. And what better way than by human sacrifices and plagues and mass murder? And if that doesn't make them behave morally, we just don't know what does. <laughs> if there is a single person in this room who can bring themselves to believe anything remotely like that, they convict themselves of being, first, very stupid, and second, very immoral. And thus, it seems to me that the case for divine intervention and for the supernatural falls, and that we should be glad that it's fallen. And thank you. Peter, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I, I, I can tell you're all enjoying the post-Saddam era, uh, which, uh, which we were told was so good. I, I, I wonder whether an invasion of uh, the uh, celestial regions might now uh, be in order, and we could then have a post-God era, which would be of similar delightful quality. I am amazed, when confronted with this argument, how little my brother seems to know of that which he attacks. How he prefers to mock and belittle, how he prefers to select from it all those things which I think most educated believers themselves are troubled by, how he imagines that people other than himself do not seem ever to have been troubled by the things which trouble him, and nonetheless have come to the conclusion, despite all, that belief in a God, in my case, God, call him by his first name, that belief in God is nonetheless wise, beneficial, and good, not just for ourselves, but for the universe. If only the, how shall I say, the flippant, jeering tone could be abandoned for a moment and we could discuss this more seriously. It seems to me to be incurious to the point of tedium to examine the universe and not to ask yourself certain very powerful questions. The first of which is, why is there something rather than nothing? The second of which is, since we do not know anything at all about our origins and must work out what we think we know from extremely scanty evidence, that it would be unwise to form absolute certainties on this. Now the character of the book, God is Not Great, which my brother wrote, is one entirely of the jeering the mocking, the caricature, the picking out of that which is bad. What? I do not Stop think... That. Stop I do that. not think that this... Sorry, did you wish to intervene? No, no, sorry. Please. I'm telling him not to... You sure? I mean, here, I need to know... This, Stop, absolutely. Stop that. No? Right. Um, that's, that's the end of the Christian no charity for the, for the moment. Um, had it been couched of course, in a more generous tone, 
it would have been less fun to do, and who knows, there might have been other consequences in the bookshops, I don't know. But since it wasn't couched in that tone, that is what we have to argue with. And I would simply say this. First of all, for a while, and I'm surprised he hasn't asked it tonight, uh, my brother would go around saying that there was uh, a, a question which no believer could answer about what action could, uh, no, um, could no believer take, which an unbeliever could, or something of, of that character. To which I would reply, the question of morality is utterly irrelevant to you if you genuinely believe that which you say you believe. If you think that there is no authority, if you think that we are the products of random chaos, if there is no reason for the existence of the universe apart from a series of accidents, then you may behave exactly as you wish. Now, in the case of Christopher and his uh, ally and uh, colleague, uh, Professor Dawkins, I refer to this as luxury atheism. I know where they live. They live in very pleasant parts of very pleasant cities, and they are able to advance the theory of atheism purely as a theory. Well, I live in England, and I don't need to travel very far from my home, which is not far from Professor Dawkins's home, in Oxford, to find a large number of highly practical atheists. In my country, it is common, no more than three or four times a week, to read accounts of people being kicked to death by youths aged between about 13 and 17. It invariably ends with the phrase, and then they started kicking his head as if it were a football. These accounts grow more and more common. If you venture into the areas where these people live, you will find a complete absence of any kind of moral feeling whatsoever. A complete absence of self-government among the strong, among the healthy, among those who are able to control and take advantage of their neighbours. Christianity and everything that went with it have vanished from among them. They are practical atheists, and they really mean it. In fact, in some ways, they're not atheists. If you examine my country carefully, you'll find that the worship of Mark, the slaughter of children at the rate of 180,000 a year in the womb, continues, that the worship of Mammon is out of control, that the worship of Ashtaroth is pretty well advanced as well, and a number of the other <laughs> pagan gods there, way out in front of the dear old Anglican Jehovah in whom I attempt to believe. All this seems to me to point to an important factor in religion, which is why it seems to me that it is reasonable, given that we are ignorant of the answer as to whether there is or is not a God and cannot know, why we might reasonably think that it was worth believing in such a being. If the universe does have an order, if it does have an origin, if there is running through it an eternal law, then wouldn't it be a good idea to try to find out what it was and to seek to govern ourselves by it? Now, I too have been to North Korea, and I will tell you that I have the opposite impressions to that which my brother had. This is a country entirely run by people who hate and despise the idea of God and who have made themselves into gods. And that indeed is what so very often happens when people ignore the very, very earliest part of the Bible in which the serpent says to Adam and Eve, eat of this fruit and ye shall be as gods. This is what we do when we decide for ourselves that there is nothing above us. We destroy authority. We destroy all the things which turn the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. They go. They are going very rapidly in my country. I suspect that if things proceed as they are in our educational system and our trash culture, they will happen pretty rapidly in this one too. And then you will know, then you will know what happens when God is truly absent, not because he isn't there, but because the only place he can occupy lies within our heart. And either he is there because we invite him, and we seek his assistance in the governing of ourselves, or he is not, and we cease to be able to govern ourselves because we no longer know how to do so.